Hello, our church family and friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. Before we jump into today's message, I just want to say our church is a non-denominational church that meets in Madison, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. If you are in the southern Wisconsin area, we would invite you to make our church your church today. We believe in the local church, and if you're too far out of the Madison area, Find a local church. We want you plugged in. We're believing that the word of God will get on the inside of you. You'll be able to help other believers. Other believers will be able to help you. God will put his super on your natural and you will be, not might be, you will be a mighty force for the Lord. All right, we are continuing our series called The Ministry of Jesus. We get this out of Luke chapter 4. We're going to be turning there in just a moment. Uh, and we see that what he said about himself reading a scripture that he is fulfilling uh, the call and the destiny on his life. And he mentions what he's here to do. So let's read it. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And so today we are calling this one healing. And we're going to focus on the scripture, recovering of sight to the blind. Now, I absolutely believe that God is a healer and he is still healing people today physically. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. But I can't talk about recovery of sight to the blind without going back and talking about it spiritually opening the eyes of people. Uh, now see, the Bible talks about this, opening the eyes, spiritual eyes of the people so that they can see throughout the entire Bible. And Jesus mentions it several times, but he also marries the two of natural and spiritual together. Uh, he does it, and I'll probably read one of the scriptures. I won't go into uh, many, many of them, but it's all through it, opening their spiritual eyes. Uh, even Paul prays that we, God would open our eyes that we could see clearly. Uh, if we, When we give our lives to Jesus, our spirit becomes alive and all of a sudden we're able to see things in the Word of God that we have never seen before. And as we continue to mature in the body of Christ, we see and understand God's Word at a level we never saw it before. And so my prayer for you today is that your spiritual eyes will be able to be open at a greater level than ever before. But naturally, if you need healing in your body, that you will experience that healing today. All right, let's jump into it. Now, Jesus wants to heal you mind, soul, and body. We've already talked about this in some of the messages before, but God came to heal the brokenhearted. Your mental capability, maybe mentally or emotionally you was hurt, God came to heal that. He came to heal you spiritually, being separated from God, that you couldn't see Him, hear Him, or understand Him. He came to heal that, and He came to heal your body. But in the beginning, we're going to focus on spiritual eyes being opened, and then we'll talk about the natural eyes being opened. Okay, John 9 and verse 41. And Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remains. All right, I want to read it out of the Passion Translation. I think it makes it a little more clear. Jesus told them, if you would acknowledge your blindness, then your sins would be removed. But uh, now that ye claim you see, your sins remain. What is Jesus telling them? Jesus is saying, because you don't even understand you're blind, your sin, it remains. But if you would just recognize that you have been blind, they have 
the religious people have been so blind. Jesus is saying that if you would acknowledge me, if you would see me as the Son of God, your sins would be removed. But you say, I don't need you. I can continue to serve God without you. And because of that, your sins remain. Jesus is saying to them, He is here to open their spiritual eyes and remove sin from their life. Jesus is the only one that can remove sin. But again, I want to read where Jesus combines spiritual and physical opening of eyes. Let's turn to Mark chapter 8, and we're going to read in verse 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and, to, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, I don't understand, I honestly don't know, but Jesus is healed multiple blind people by spitting either on the ground and getting putting on their eyes or spitting in their eyes. I don't know why. I don't believe Jesus has called me to have a spit in ministry and thankful for that. Uh, but Jesus has done this more than once. And it continues and says, and he put his hands upon him and he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes. He made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Now, I want to give you my opinion on this scripture here. Now, I've heard it preached and I believe with everything in me, the way it was preached that I heard before was wrong. I've heard someone say that, see, even Jesus had to lay his hands on a man twice. And when Jesus heals the sick, he heals them. We don't see Jesus having to do something multiple times to get the job done. He starts the work and it is going to be finished. My opinion, my personal opinion on this scripture is that Jesus opened his spiritual eyes first. What is his statement? He touches, he spits on his eyes, puts spit on his eyes, and the man says, I see men walking around as trees. We've talked about this in other, um, other sermons before, that Jesus in the Bible uses certain things to represent other things. And many times in the Bible, we see trees represent people. And spiritually, I believe if you could see in the spirit realm and see people, you would see them as massive trees being planted with roots way down deep, able to withstand a storm. And what do trees do? They produce one shade, being able to help others. But also, Jesus talks about trees producing fruit. And uh, when he's talking about trees producing fruit, he's not talking about the trees. Uh, he's talking talking about people producing good fruit. That is the subject of the whole thing when Jesus is talking about trees. But let's look. I believe Jesus opened his spiritual eyes and he saw the people spiritually before he ever saw them naturally. I believe Jesus called his spirit to become alive and then healed his natural eyes. So let's look at a couple places where uh, the Bible refers to people as trees. Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Here it comes, verse uh, 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law does he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. That right there, God is referring to people as trees. All right, let's look at another scripture. Psalms 52 and verse 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. What is he like? A green olive tree. We see this several times. Psalms 92 and verse 12. 
The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And I could just continue to do this. There are scripture after scripture after scripture referring to people as trees. When he says, I see men like trees, I think he is seeing people spiritually. When Jesus says, good trees produce fruit, he's not talking about the trees. He's talking about people. The topic is not the trees. The topic that Jesus is discussing is people. Mark chapter 8 and verse 13. And he left them and entered into a ship and departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread uh, and had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. Okay, what I'm going to point out again here is how he wants his disciples to see spiritually. Can I tell you something? God wants your spiritual eyes open. He wants your spiritual ears open. He wants you to hear and see what God is saying and doing. All right. He charged them saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they responded among themselves saying, Is it because we have no bread? Okay, so Jesus is using something. Jesus does this all the time. He sees something naturally and uses it to explain a spiritual concept. We see it constantly. Seed, uh, or, uh, to seed, time, and harvest. He uses that. He talks about seed falling upon good ground, growing up. It, then he explains it, that it's the Word of God. Uh, he continues to explain things to them, trying to show them, trying to get their spiritual eyes to be open so that they can see. And Jesus talks about leavened bread, and he's talking about the Pharisees, he's talking about Herod, and the disciple says, he is rubbing it in, he is telling us how we missed the mark again, how we made another mistake, we forgot the bread. Now, they were there when Jesus fed the 5,000 men, and probably about 15,000 people. They were there. They saw the loaves and the bread. I believe Jesus is trying to get through their thick skull. Have y'all seen what I can do with a loaf of bread? It doesn't matter that we only have one loaf. It doesn't matter that we don't have much bread. I can make more bread. What Jesus is saying, beware of what the Pharisees, beware of what Herod is saying. The fallacies, the, the wrong doctrine, the ungodly teaching, beware of what they're saying. Even in the Bible, we see that Jesus states and the Word states that men shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word out of the Word of God, out of the mouth of God. And so Jesus is saying, be careful of their teaching. Give me my daily bread. Give me the word that will sustain me, hold me, and keep me through the day. Jesus is trying to show them a spiritual point, and they can't see it. They go back to the natural and say, is this because we forgot the extra loaves of bread? Mm. Let's look at Jesus' response. Verse 17. And when Jesus knew it, he said unto them, Why reason ye, because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not, neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Jesus asked them, Have ye hardened your heart toward the spiritual concepts that I have taught you and showed you over and over and over again? Let's pick up at verse 18. Having eyes, see ye not? Having ears, hear you not? Do you not remember when I break the five loaves among the 5,000 and how many baskets full of uh, fragments uh, took ye up? They said unto him, Twelve. And when the seven among the 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, Seven. And he said unto them, how is it that you don't understand? 
And again, like I said, Jesus is trying to open their eyes. He's trying to show them spiritually, you're, with what I'm saying, you're not seeing it. With what I'm saying, you're not hearing it. He's trying to get them to desire and want to open their eyes eyes spiritually. Can I tell you something? I believe Jesus is doing the same thing to the church today. He desires that your spiritual eyes be opened. Just as much as he desires your physical eyes and physical healing be upon your body, he desires the spiritual aspects of what he's doing that your eyes would be open to see what God is doing now today. I think sometimes we get so focused on everything the world is going through. And it's people, this is what, oh my goodness. We can't live in a world as Christians inspect the world that does not know him to act like him. There is evil in the world today. Yes, we must pray. Yes, we must be a part of what God is doing. But we can't get so distracted by looking at the evil and in the natural and say, Oh, there's such a lack that we don't see what God is doing in the church, in our lives, and what God wants to do. We have to keep not only our physical eyes open, but our spiritual eyes and our ears open to hear what God is saying and to do and see what God is doing. My friends, God's got great things in plan and in store for the world today. And I want you to be a part of it. Just like he healed the uh, blinded man, spiritual eyes first. I think God wants to heal your eyes. But I am not going to stop there. God also wants to heal your body. He wants to open your natural eyes and he wants to open your spiritual eyes. Jesus makes a statement to him. Having eyes, see ye not. Now, that statement, having eyes, see you not, the blind leading the blind, all this dealing with eyes, God, Jesus says it several times. Now, I do believe that, uh, now this is a joke to an extent, but it's also very, very, very real, that women see things that men can't. They do. Uh, and let me look it up. I, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. The Smithsonian Magazine reported in March 31, 2015, they point to a study that says women can see more colors than men can on average. Now, they believe the reason why is that men have a lot more testosterone than women. Uh, and in our brain, in our physical phys, uh, vision part of our brain, where we uh, take in sight, uh, that there's testosterone receptors in that part of the brain. Now, they don't know 100%, but they believe that that's possibly the reason is that the testosterone coming into the vis physical or the vis visual part of the brain that blocks some of the color that men can actually perceive. Now, I personally believe women can see a lot better color of red. The reason I believe this it's because Jesse sometimes will ask me to grab the ketchup out of the fridge. And I know it's in the door. I know it's in the door. And I will look and scan and I will not see that bottle of ketchup. And there have been times that uh, I have, in the beginning of our marriage, I'd say, Jesse, we don't have ketchup because it ain't here. And she'll walk over and in two seconds, she'll, there it is. Uh, and I, it has happened so many times that now I don't say that. It may take me five minutes to find it, but I am going to scan each and every shelf several times. And then I'm going to go back and touch each bottle. Is this a ketchup? Is this a ketchup? Just looking everywhere for the ketchup. She can find it in two seconds. It may take me two to five minutes to find it. But uh, I, I know that's... <laughs> Kind of a joke, but it's very, very true. It happens so many times. Uh, I, even if I'm looking for a certain shirt or a certain thing, but women, you're able to perceive so much more colors than men can. Uh, it's scientific. They don't know 100% why, but it has been proven that that's the case. So give men a break if they can't find the ketchup or if they don't see two different colors between shades of blue, a fingernail polish that you want to put on. But Jesus is, I believe, telling us, and I, I feel like when it comes to color, that I have eyes that I cannot see. When Jesus tells me to find something and I can't find it, whether it's a shirt, whether it's a book, whether it's the ketchup, whatever it is, sometimes I feel like I have eyes, but I can not see. 
either that or she's just got something extra that I just don't have. Uh, it's a joke, but it is very, very real. And Jesus was speaking to the disciples. I want you to have eyes to be able to see. I want spiritually you to be able to see. And I want to say this too. Um, God absolutely has come to heal you spiritually, but He is also our God, our healer of our natural body. And so I don't want to go on one side way too far where it's like God only heals spiritually. And I don't want to go the other side uh, so far that we say, well, God only heals uh, naturally. How about God is a God that can do both? How about that? And so I want to uh, discuss three ways that God heals us naturally. He heals our natural body. He wants you to see spiritually, but he wants you to see naturally as well. He wants you spiritually walking on the right path, and naturally he wants you walking on the right path. And there's three ways God heals, and I believe two of them we ignore most of the time, and we lift one way up, and we ignore the other two. Okay, so the three ways God heals is naturally, medically, and miraculously. And I think as a church, we lift up miraculous and we ignore medical and we ignore natural. And we almost believe that natural is mm, less than miraculous and medical is mm, less than miraculous. I personally believe all three are miraculous. I think all three are miracle. I mean, the fact that we have white blood cells, that we have platelets, the white blood cells fights and kills diseases and things that are trying to make us sick. And then we even have the platelets that if we get cut will clot and stop us from bleeding to death, bleeding out. It is the way our body functions is a miracle. It's miraculous when you think about it. And we just take it for advantage uh, until we absolutely need it. Uh, and then even medically. God gave us a brain, the ability to study, to, uh, to learn things and make things better. And the fact that we can study the human body and assist it, help it to heal itself and for broken bones to be mended, for cuts that are too big to close up and help it clot and help it heal and help skin to grow back and all this stuff, oh my goodness, it is is a miracle to me that we have this ability. And I don't want to lift one above the other. God has created all things, given us the ability of medical uh, assistance, and given us a body that miracle heals itself. This is all from the miraculous work of God. Whether God touches a blind man and his eyes come open, or whether over time with medical, or whether... Uh, his own body, I think it is miraculous. It is a miracle, all three of them. And we shouldn't lift one up above the other. We should acknowledge that God is in all three of them. All right. Uh, my, my, I've already said that my mother has experienced it and my uh, wife has experienced all three of these within the last couple of years. But I want to read one last scripture to you. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 16. And even when, uh, excuse me, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and they cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. A-L-L. -L. You know, I looked that word up in the Greek and also in the Hebrew. And you know what all means? All. A-L-L. -L. It means all, every one of them. So God healed every one of them that was sick. Uh, that it might be fulfilled that was spoken by Elijah the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bear our sickness. So a lot of times I have questions of why do people even still get sick if Jesus came to bear our sickness? So I can't say that I know every time or every reason why we deal with sickness, but I do know that God came to heal our bodies and open our spiritual eyes. I talked about, I talked about my mother and my wife both dealing with um, sickness. My mother had a stroke. And she had a mini stroke, but they misdiagnosed it. They didn't know. And then the next day, she had a massive stroke. 
when she was life lighted to the hospital. She was already has been experiencing a stroke for over two hours by the time the doctor got to her. The doctor said there was a 50-50 chance and um, said that if she rec- you know, lives through this, that she'll probably never, ever be the same. My mother is with me today, 100% fine. Walking, talking, would never know she even had a stroke. She experienced natural. She experienced medical and miraculous healing. My friend, I am so thankful for the doctors. I'm so thankful for her own body working and doing. I'm so thankful for the miraculous healing power of God on her life. She's with me today because God is the healer. My wife was diagnosed with a very rare cancer. It was her thymus gland and it was sitting up next to her heart and it began to wrap around the main arteries of her heart. And so surgery was off the table. It was connected. And I remember the day that we were talking online to the doctor because we couldn't meet in person because of the pandemic. I remember asking the doctor, because I'm a number cruncher, I want to know my numbers, I want to know my chances, I want to know percentages. And I asked, what's the percentage that she is healthy and walks away from this? The doctor said it's almost impossible to know, because it is so rare. The doctor told us, about a 10 to 15% chance. And I remember thanking the doctor. And I said, in no way do I diminish what you're doing. But I want you to understand we are that 10 to 15% chance. That's who we are. (laughs) The doctor looked a little perplexed and my wife joined in and said, Doc, we're believers. And we believe God has us covered. The doctor joined in and said, I want you to know that I'm a believer as well. And she told us, the reason I'm here today is because when I was dying in a hospital, I called out on the name of Jesus. And he saved me when I had no other chance. And she told us, she's like, it's you. You are the people that are that 10% chance, 15%. She's like, if anyone's going to beat it, it's you. And we've experienced, my wife has experienced, and she stands with us today, cancer-free. Only because God is the healer. Spiritually, physically, emotionally, God is the healer. And maybe you would tell me today, Pastor, I want to pray. My spiritual eyes are open. That I will be able to see what God is doing. I will be able to see His Word at a greater level than ever before. And I would know what God has for my life. Or maybe you say, today, Pastor, I need God like your wife did. I need God like your mother did. I need Him to heal my body. We want to pray for that as well today. I'm believing today that both these things will be done. Maybe you say, I need both these things. I got to have God heal me spiritually and I got to have God heal me emotionally and I got to have God heal my body. Nothing's too big for God. These are all ministries of the Lord. He said, I came to open the eyes of the blind. I come to heal you spiritually. I come to heal you emotionally. I come to save your soul. I came to make a way where there was no way. Today we're going to pray. And I'm believing God right now. That happens for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that their spiritual eyes would be opened. Right now, Father, I pray that my spiritual eyes would be opened. That I would see at a greater level than ever before. Father, that they would see at a greater level than ever before. They would continue to grow spiritually and they will see. Father, we pray right now for healing in their bodies. Their bodies would function as you have created it to function. They will see the hand of God move on their behalf. They will see healing naturally. They will see healing 
medically, and they will see healing miraculously. And God, we do not count it any small thing, either of them. We don't lift one above the other, for you are involved in it all. We thank you, Father, that you are moving on their behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you're watching this and you have never accepted Jesus as your Savior, that's the first step to your spirit coming alive. It's got to be done. That's how we step into the family of God. If you've never done that, or you say, I have at one time, but I walked away like the prodigal son. The beauty of that story is the prodigal son does not end in his mess. He comes home. He comes to the family of God. He comes back to his father. And the father runs to him and restores his place. If you say, that's me. The Bible tells us that if we would believe what Jesus has done, that he is the son of God, and we would confess that with our mouth, believe in our heart, confess with our mouth, we will, not might be, but we shall be saved. So let's do that right now, if that's you. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Today, I know I'm saved because of what your word tells me. In Jesus' name, amen. Can it really be that simple? Absolutely. And God wants to help you every step of the way. If you're in the southern Wisconsin area, we would invite you to make our church your church. We want to get God's word on the inside of you. Help you grow spiritually. Open your eyes so you can see the plan of God for your life. If you're too far outside the Madison area, we want to encourage you to continue to join us online and find a local church. I love you greatly. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we will see you online or in person, but I look forward to seeing you next week.